Have you ever wondered how modern railroads replace old railroad ties? Well, recently I had the opportunity to watch a contract tie gang working on Grand Canyon Railway. This gang had about a dozen guys and a myriad of equipment. With that, they were able to replace a little over 200 ties in an eight hour shift. So let's take a closer look at this tie gang. I'll show you each of the machines and what they individually do. Hi, I'm Eric and welcome to my channel. What's it about? Well, pretty much whatever I want. I've always been a photographer and with this channel I have a new outlet to showcase those images I've collected over the years and are still collecting. My goal? To take things I'm interested in and share them with all of you. You might find yourself going to a place you've never heard of or learning about something you never understood. So stick with me and you never know what's coming up next. The Santa Fe's 64-mile Grand Canyon branch was originally completed in 1901. The line was heavily rebuilt in the 1920s and has received continual maintenance since. Railroad ties last a long time in the dry climate of northern Arizona as evidenced by these date nails. Grand Canyon Railway has a regular maintenance program where they try to replace about 4,000 to 5,000 ties every year. So now let's take a look a little closer at how this is actually done. This first machine is a spike puller. I didn't actually get to see this machine in operation as it was done for the day by the time I arrived. The crew had two of these, one to pull out spikes on the left side and one to pull out spikes on the right side. The next machine to come along is a tie insert. The track crew had two of these, the first one used to remove the old ties and set them aside. After the old ties have been removed, someone has to come along and collect the old tie plates and put them back in the proper position to be reused. Then, this machine comes along cleans out the ballast and dirt out of the old holes, making it easier to insert the new ties. The crew had come along and placed the new ties in their approximate location much earlier on. But this bridge crane then came along and place the new ties much closer to their insert locations. It also would pick up some of the old ties as it went along as well. Next came the second tie inserter. This one took the new ties and placed them into the clean hole.
this gang came along after the tie inserter. They had a machine that could hydraulically lift the rail to insert the tie plates. Next is this small tamper. It packs the ballast in and around the ties in order to bring them up flush with the bottom of the rail and also to hold everything in place once the trains start rolling over them. After the ties are in the correct position, this spiker comes along and then fastens the ties to the rail. Once the ties are firmly spiked in place, then the ballast regulator can come along and smooth everything out.
Lastly, the bridge cranes come along, pick up the old ties, and move them into a location for bundling and shipping. As you see here, not every tie is replaced at this time, just the worst of the worst. It'll take about 30 years to get to the end of the railroad and then they'll start again at the beginning and replace the ties that need replacing. Grand Canyon Railway tries to do about four to 5,000 ties a year. 